Good morning. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this beautiful brand new morning, <clears throat> December 14th. Ah, the Lord has made a new day, <clears throat> and we will rejoice in Him. <clears throat> if I can get this throat in order here, I'd like to start off rejoicing uh, with Psalm 48. 48. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. <clears throat> well, great is our Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His Holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, 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 on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Oh yes, the city of the great king. Yerushalayim, the city of peace. And that's what we pray for every day, isn't it? Because <clears throat> all of Satan and his hordes of demons do not want them to have peace. But we will pray that they have peace. Hallelujah, Connie's right. Check out Kathy's graphics. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Melissa, for how you put them on every day on YouTube. And you bring it and you just put it right there. So all anybody has to do is touch it and they will have it. <clears throat> well, on this 14th day, of the last day of our year, December, we will be starting the brand new book of Jonah. Jonah chapter one. Oh my goodness, what a story. And we can identify so much, can't we, with Jonah. <clears throat> His fears and the way he just ran away because he, he just couldn't do what the Lord was gonna ask him to do. <clears throat> but the Lord works with us it brings us back around if we'll let him, doesn't he? So I'm going to have another sip here and try to get this morning voice in order. And we will read and enjoy. We ask you, Holy Spirit, please, please, please come. Please come and anoint your very own word for our ears that we would hear with faith that we would hear with understanding, that you would illumine to us and to our lives what you want us to receive this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, wow, Miss Maria <coughs> is here <coughs> before we start, and that is awesome, sister. Welcome, welcome, Mel. Miss Sharon, <coughs> she's been busy sending out her scriptures to all the people that she ministers to. How wonderful is that? And I am one of them that she sends it to, and I appreciate it. All right, Jonah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And what was it that came? The word of the Lord. Are we listening and hearing for his word to come? The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amati, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. <clears throat> now, what would you do if you heard the Lord say to you, Get up and go to Chicago or San Francisco or New York? or you name it, put fill in the blank, and cry out. In other words, walk the streets and just start crying out in a loud voice. 
Whoa. That's what he was asked to do. <clears throat> Cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and he went down into it to go with him to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> well, there is deception, isn't it? Where can you go from the presence of the Lord? Nowhere. <laughs> and he's going to find it out. But the Lord <clears throat> sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. That's really bad. And then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah, what, what happened with Jonah? Oh, we do this all the time. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and was fast asleep. <clears throat> How many times have the burdens and the things laid out before us become such a burden that we just go and lay down and go to sleep? I raise my hand. This scripture is me. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. Ooh, boy, they are hot after answers, aren't they? So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Uh, I believe the Lord was in this lot, wasn't he? And then they said to him, Please tell us. For whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? Oh boy, they are going to interrogate him, aren't they? And so he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Mm. <clears throat> there were some conversations that went on before he went down and went to sleep. He had told them. And then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. Can't you just see them holding on to whatever they can? Tossed and turned. The ship is going to break up. We're all going to drown. We have to have an answer here. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, and then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men, well, they didn't want to do that. So they said, well, listen, let, let's row harder. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land, but they could not. Woo! God's hand was just right there, right? Row as hard as you want. You're not going anywhere. But they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done it as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah, and they threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Exactly the prophetic word that came out of Jonah's mouth. Can you imagine those guys 
they would have gone. I bet there was a long pregnant pause as the sea from practically destroying them, it ceased and became calm. Furthermore, where's Jonah? Sinking. And then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. Oh boy, you and I would too. And offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. Can you imagine that feeling? Oh my goodness. You talk about fear. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Can you imagine all of those fishes natural sounds of digestion and who knows what's floating down in there, huh? All kinds of stuff. Oh, let's go on to chapter 2 and see what, what happens now. And then Jonah prayed to the Lord. <laughs> he doesn't have any, any other thing he can do. Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried. Do you suppose that whole experience in the belly of that fish? He gave him a good dose of seeing Sheol. And you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. I mean, he was, he was perilous. He, he was absolutely not able to swim, but sank down and swallowed. And then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Oh, he knew the presence of the Holy Ghost. And now, he doesn't feel it. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The waters surrounded me even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit. Oh, Lord, my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Do you suppose he's behind? Good question for all of us. Are we way behind giving the tenth to the Lord in his temple? I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And I'm not accusing. We went to California. We were gone for, I was behind. Last Sunday, I mean, I, I, I sent a whopper check. I was behind. I needed to catch up. So the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Oh, I wish I could see that replay. Don't you? And and do you suppose I mean, do you suppose that fish made all the sounds of vomiting? Let's move along to chapter 3. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Oh, he's a god of second chances. Sometimes 3, 4, 
whatever it takes. Oh, praise you, Jesus, how many times have you given us a second chance saying uh, the same word, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh. <laughs> you and I would too. I, I don't want to be in the belly of any fish. Went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. That's how big. Walk for three days from one end to the other. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. And then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Wow. I mean, that's getting right to the core of it, isn't it? Right now. So the people of Nineveh believe God. <laughs> A very unusual city. The people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. And then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Wow, now the entire city is in a form of getting ready to repent. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let every one turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Imagine that. Take all the food away. Put all those animals where there's nothing. No water, no food. There's going to be a great lowing of the cattle, a great cry out, isn't there? And look what God put in, I mean, uh, the king put in his message out to everybody. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? I mean, this king believed 100%. And then... God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Oh, wow. And that is so true. That is true today for every city, every country, and every person. If we will repent and turn away from all the ways that take us away from God, he will do it. He will heal Israel, America, name the country, China, South America, name, name the place. He will do it. We'll go along to chapter four. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. What? Woo. After all he's been through? Oh, isn't that just like us? We learn a lesson, and then we just act up all over again. God has to deal with it all over again. God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances. What a wonderful God. It displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. How about that? He told the word, but he didn't want him to do it. He wanted to be able to go back and say, I told you, God, I've come. I've told them all this, and, and they're doing it. And it, he, his little pride was hurt. His religious pride. Oh, that's the worst pride there is. 
and he got angry. So he prayed to the Lord. Well, he's in fine shape to pray to the Lord, isn't he? And he said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore, I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know, I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness. He's saying all this angry. One who relents from doing harm. Therefore, now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. How many times have we thought that or said that? Oh, I just wish he'd take me home. Oh, I just... We're guilty. And then the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city, and he sat on the east side of the city, and there he made himself a shelter, and he sat under it in the shade. We're going to pout now. We're going to sulk. We're going to hang on to that anger. We aren't going to repent of it, and we aren't going to let it go. Oh, how many times have we done that? How many times have we done that with our spouse, with our kids? with the church. Name it. He sat under it in the shade till he might see what would become of the city. <clears throat> He's not thinking good thoughts of the city, is he? And the Lord prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery can you see this? But as morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm. And it so damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. And then he wished death for himself and said it is better for me to die than to live and then God said to Jonah is it right for you to be angry about the plant and he said it is right for me to be angry even to death wow I wouldn't want to die in that shape oh I pray that I'm real sweet Everything's forgiven. Everything's cleaned up when, when he calls me home. Don't want to go when you're madder than hops, do you? But the Lord said, You have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and much livestock to boot. And that's the end of the book. How about that? We are left with the question. May we apply the question to our own life and see where we are. And tomorrow, we will read Mika. Now, a good American would say Micah. <clears throat> but we've had Scott in here training on us, and we will say Mika. Connie says, I can only wonder what the digestive chemicals in the whale did to Jonah's appearance. Now, there's a good nurse for you. She's thinking it through. I'm sure. And can you imagine how bad he, he stank, stunk? Ugh, all those bile juices. Merciful heavens. All right, we will let go of Jonah. There you are. I hope you read it for yourself. And let Holy Ghost reveal to you. Just 
parts will jump out. All right, we move right along, y'all. And we are in the great, wonderful last book, The Revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter 5. Chapter 5. And John says, <clears throat> I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one, no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. And to read that sentence makes me wonder, was there a whole bunch that tried? We don't know. But look what it did to John. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Oh, there is one worthy, one who is able, one who has paid the price. Whew. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne, <clears throat> I wish I could see that. We're talking about in the middle somewhere of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of those 24 elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out, sent out into all the earth. What a sight. And then he came and he took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls. Get this. Don't miss this. Y'all, are you paying attention? Don't miss this. And golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. <clears throat> I wish I had the tune they had. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God. And we, you, we shall reign on the earth Oh my goodness, the first announcement of all that the church is being prepared to do. And then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. The number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Can you imagine what that sounded like? 
John's got an innumerable number. And here's what all those voices combined together said. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Oh, if you listen to the Messiah, what we call the Messiah, put to music, they sing this, and it just gives me goosebumps because I think of this, and I think of these words came from 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And every creature which is in the heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all. Are you getting a hold of it? And then the four living creatures said, Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever and ever and ever. I mean, I could sit here all day long and keep saying forever and it wouldn't wouldn't even wouldn't even scratch the surface of the forever we're talking about. Oh my goodness. Be filled with his word today. Take it with you. It'll minimize every problem right down to nothing. Nothing. This is what we have to look forward to. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, precious Jesus, the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. Woo! I mean, that scripture comes to me in the shower regularly, and I go, Lord, you were slain before the foundation of the world. Just try to figure that one out. I mean, just try. It just hangs there as truth. All right, y'all. We got to move along. Boy, I hate to even leave where we were. We will go to Psalm 133. Now, this is the 13th Psalm that we have read. And oh, my goodness, I wish I could sing it. A Song of Ascents of David, the 13th one. <clears throat> and there is a tune. It's a tune that I didn't sing enough that I can remember even one time I, I called up Cliff Crynock and I said, Cliff. What, what is the tune to this? Because he used to play it. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh, what a great sentence to read after all that we just read in Revelation. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore, eternal life, everlasting life. What an incredible psalm to read right after Revelation. And we wrap it up, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 29, verses 26 and 27. Proverbs 29, 26 and 27. Many seek the ruler's favor. Many. Everybody. I mean, we want the ruler's favor. We don't want him displeased, do we? But justice for man 
comes from the Lord. Looking in the wrong place. It comes from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous. And he who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. There is the warfare, isn't it? The warfare between good and evil. Between the Lord and Satan. He's already defeated. But he's hoping that you don't believe that. He's hoping that you don't. And that you follow him. Oh my goodness. You know what? I'm going to tell you something that's so precious to me. Not only is it precious for me to be here with all of you. I mean, you are just... I just have such a... You are my, you are my sisters. You are my brothers. I love you dearly. But in my own kitchen, I have freedom in the Holy Ghost to read this word with as much expression or whatever as I want to. Because I want to follow the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not going to have me say, say, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard them saying blessing and honor and glory. You wouldn't come back for more of that, would you? Because that's not how it was. Oh, no, that's not how it was. No, thousands and thousands said all together with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and the rest of it. Oh, hallelujah. Mel says amen and amen. I mean, all we want is the word. But we want it with unction. We don't want 2%. We want 100%. And, and the next time we read it, we're asking Holy Ghost, please give me more. Illumine more, right? I mean, let's get excited about the Word of God. I mean, if we, if we, uh, if we come across to others who are pretty dead spiritually as obnoxious, good. Oh, good. I mean, I would rather be called a whole bunch of names and, and looked upon as a crazy woman than to blend in. I mean, God said, I'd rather you were hot or cold, but if you're going to be lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. I don't want to be vomited. I want to, and I don't want to be cold. I want to be hot for his word. Hot. Anytime you see I'm not hot, write me a little little note and say, what's wrong with you today? I mean, let's, let's, let's pump it up here, Jane. I'm sorry, but I do believe these words are important because it's time the church rises up bold, loud, ready, go out there in the streets, Let's go after them. Let's invite them. Let's, let's say, who can I invite to go to the Christmas play, service, whatever. And See, I'm speaking myself because tomorrow night we are going to have the most awesome, awesome. Oh, I mean, they, they even, we, when this rolls around at Christmas time, St. Michael's where I go, they, they invite professionals from the Charleston Symphony, special singers. I mean, it is going to be incredible and cost nothing. Just come to the church. It will be glorious. I can't wait. All right, I'm going to quit ranting and raving here. Woo! I enjoyed the rant, though. Father God, we bless you today. Oh, my, oh, my, we bless you. Your precious word, your word is on fire. Holy Spirit is on fire. 
And we thank the Lord we do not serve a cold, dead God. No, we serve one who created it all, who, who, who made us, made it all, out of his great love, out of his great sincereness. He wanted fellowship, so he created man. And he doesn't want cold fellowship. So, Lord, we come before your throne and we bow down humbly. But we are on fire, Lord. And we pray for your city. We pray for peace for Jerusalem. Oh, precious Lord, let, let peace flow out like it's just a, a huge pipeline that just spreads it all out. Peace everywhere. Right right in the face of their enemies, right in the face. Oh, hallelujah, right, right in their presence. Let them not be able to do a thing that's destructive. We bind and come against every enemy of Israel. And we say, you shall be powerless today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Our Heavenly Father is preparing a people for the second coming. Oh, Father, let them get excited. Let them get excited about you. Yes, let all the elders and let all those who are in ruling positions, let them have a, a feeling of the Holy Ghost come over them that they kneel down and prostrate themselves before the Lord. That they say, wow, you've allowed me to be here what can I do for you, Yeshua, Adonai? What can I do for you, Adonai? Oh, please, let the power and the presence of Ruach HaKodesh come upon your people. Hallelujah. Lord, we, we ask for the same thing for America and, and for every country. Maria, ask for Peru. Hallelujah. Ask for all the places that you've been. Ask for all the places that God has put upon your spirit. I'm asking for Kenya. Yes. Yes, Kenya. I'm asking for Israel. Hallelujah. I'm asking for Canada. Where I went every summer of my childhood. I'm asking. Holy Ghost, breathe out fire of your gospel upon Canada, upon Kenya, upon China, upon India. We name them all, Lord, all over the earth, all over the earth. Let a great, great returning to you happen, a great revival, a great restoration of all those who would. And Lord, we lift up friends and relatives to you. We lift up the, the problems that we know about and and the answers that we are hoping come. We lift them up, Lord, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Messiah, who answers, who is at the right-hand side of the Father right now, interceding for us. He hears us. Oh, hallelujah. We will expect great and mighty things, Lord. Great miracles, and all of God's people cried out, Yes, yes, Miss Linda, we pray for all that destruction of those tornadoes. People are burying friends and relatives. Please, Lord, Holy Spirit, please, please be with them. Help them, Lord, help them to pick up the pieces. With a broken heart, heal their hearts, Lord. Cast out the fear that surely must be just trying so hard to overtake them. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people, cried a hearty, Amen. Have a great day. Bye-bye.